Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Today, I want to celebrate what to me is one of the greatest moments in human history. I am not exaggerating. This today is the fifth anniversary of the first time SpaceX landed a Falcon 9 rocket, the first time anyone has landed an orbital rocket booster. That was five years ago today. I've watched videos of this easily a hundred times. I cry every time. I absolutely love this moment. This is that moment where Elon Musk and the SpaceX team turned science fiction into reality. This was something that we all thought was fiction. We never thought this was possible. This was just, oh, cute science fiction. That's fun to watch. It really happened. It's amazing. Let's watch a little of it. BC, start to launch auto sequence. So that helps us set the stage a little bit. We've got hundreds, maybe over a thousand people at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne and at Canaveral getting ready for this launch. It's the Orbcom 2 mission. It's a group of 11 satellites. We're going to see that later. And for a little bit more background, let's see what happened in previous attempts. So there were a lot of attempts and there was a lot of learning, a lot of mistakes, and eventually they figured it all out. And this is what came next. Okay, so we've got liftoff. Seems pretty good. That we've seen this before. If you're on, if you're a SpaceX fan, they've seen this before. People are excited. They're cheering a little bit. This is good news. But the audience has not gone nuts yet. That's coming. Look at the number of people. It's amazing. Okay, for those who haven't watched a lot of SpaceX launches, what you just saw was main engine cut off. That's the main engines of the rocket booster cut off. And then what's coming next is stage separation. The second stage of the rocket goes up, the first stage separates, and it's gonna head back to Earth. You're also gonna see the engine for the second stage start up. This engine has a larger bell. The, the lower stage, the, the booster stage has a smaller bell that's more efficient for launching at low altitude from, from ground up to a certain altitude. The larger bell is more effective in a vacuum. It has to do with how rockets work, too hard to explain, but that's the short story. 
Anyway, you're going to see that start up, and then you're going to see fairing deploy. The cone at the top of the rocket comes off. It's no longer necessary because there's no atmosphere anymore. The rocket is going really fast, but there's no air. There's no friction, so it doesn't need the fairings. Removing the fairings saves weight, and the engine is pushing, and that allows the engine to achieve a greater velocity, which is the goal, to get fast enough so that the second stage can get the payload into orbit. In this launch, the fairings fall into the atmosphere and either burn up or crash into the ocean. In future missions, they have learned how to catch the fairings or get the fairings and reuse those. And reusability, what's important with these boosters and what's important with fairings is everything that you can reuse saves money. If you can use it again on a next flight, the next flight costs less. If you can use them in 10 flights, then the $50 million cost of the rocket booster is spread over 10 flights and it becomes $5 million a flight instead of $50 million. It's a huge cost saving and it lowers the cost of getting payloads into orbit dramatically. It saves a huge amount of money. It makes it easier to accomplish missions. It means humanity can do more in space. Coming up next is stage separation, second stage engine startup, and fairing deploy. Here's what's next. The first stage has a boost back. The engines burn to push the first stage back towards Canaveral. It has gone east at high velocity to get the second stage going to where it needs to go. And now it flips around and it uses those engines to head back the other way. It's carrying a lot less mass because the second stage is gone and it's used a lot of its fuel. So the engines are very efficient at accelerating it towards where it wants to go or decelerating it and then accelerating it back towards Canaveral. Stage one boost back is starting. Now this is where it really starts to get fun. The video skips the entry burn. Boost back was to head back towards Canaveral, and then as it gets close to Canaveral, there's an entry burn that slows the rocket before it enters the Earth's atmosphere. The high velocity, it needs to slow down so it doesn't hit the atmosphere too hard. But what we're going to see next is an excited group of people and we're going to see the landing burn and the landing and the pandemonium that follows. For me, this was an incredible moment. I am a science fiction fan, not crazy science fiction fan, but I love science fiction. But this was just like, this wasn't supposed to be real and it was. And and for people who say it's a fraud, for people who say it's CGI, I live two and a half hours from Canaveral. I went and I saw the third Falcon Heavy landing with my own eyes. I saw two rocket bursters fall out of the sky. I heard the sonic booms. I saw them land. I was in Jetty Park. I was not that far away. It was spectacular. I also saw the in-flight abort test. Not nearly as spectacular, but fun. This is real. This is happening. Anybody tells you Elon Musk is a fraud, SpaceX, Tesla is a fraud. This was that seminal moment. And for me, I'm a Tesla investor. I would be a SpaceX investor, but I can't buy shares because it's not publicly traded. 
but I am a Tesla investor and I started buying stock in Tesla just a few months after I saw this. The whole notion that SpaceX is a fraud, that Tesla is a fraud, everything evaporated when SpaceX started landing orbital rocket boosters. It's mind blowing. And now think about this. It was five years ago today. No one else has successfully landed an orbital rocket booster, only SpaceX. No one has even tried to land an orbital rocket booster. Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos company does have New Shepard and it does fly up a certain distance and fly back down, but it's not achieving anything close to orbital velocities. It's just going straight up and down. It's not re-entering the atmosphere at high velocity. It's not dealing with horizontal velocities. It's just going up and coming down. It's not launching payloads. It is a much smaller achievement. It's not nothing. It's fun to watch. I like Bezos. I'm an Amazon investor too, but it's nothing compared to what SpaceX is doing. And whenever you hear with Tesla, the competition is coming. The competition is coming. The big boys are coming and they're going to be able to do this well. SpaceX is doing this in a world with big players. It's been five years and they haven't come close. Oh, well, the Chinese will copycat this. It's been five years. So when people tell you the competition is coming for Tesla, well, where's the competition for SpaceX? Where is someone else using, creating, where is someone else developing and showing that they can do reusable orbital rocket boosters? Meanwhile, SpaceX is about ready to do Starship. I'm wearing the Starship t-shirt. Check out the links below for the Starship t-shirt and other t-shirts. SpaceX is already moving ahead to the next thing, which is bringing back the second stage and going from being able to get a booster that you can use maybe 10 times to getting a booster and a second stage you can use a thousand times. This is like mind blowing stuff. So think about this with Tesla. Oh, they're developing EVs. Well, the other guys will develop EVs. Well, where are they? The Model S was eight years ago. Maybe it's nine years now. The Model S was that long ago. Where are they? No one has made a vehicle, an electric vehicle, as good as the Model S was eight years ago. Full self-driving is coming fast. No one is close to what Tesla is doing with full self-driving. And this whole notion that competition is coming and that's going to destroy Tesla. They said that about Amazon. Walmart's the big player. Walmart's going to outcompete Amazon. They'll do online. Amazon is growing like great. Apple was doing iPhones. Google came along with Android. Oh, the competition is coming. The competition is coming. Yeah, Android's doing well, but Apple's the largest company in the world. They've grown quite well. So this notion that there's some sort of competitive challenge that's going to take out SpaceX, it's going to take out Tesla, that theory is just dumb. Don't fall for it. Don't believe the fraud hypothesis. SpaceX is real. Tesla is real. And most importantly, this is spectacular. We are heading towards a future that is stunning. And right now, what Falcon 9 has done, it has taken launch costs from $100,000 a kilogram to low Earth orbit, $25,000 a kilogram to low Earth orbit was like the end of the space shuttle run. Falcon 9 got the cost of launching payloads into orbit down to around $2,000 a kilogram. And I think with this reusability, they may be getting close to $1,000 a kilogram, but Starship, Starship is coming and Starship is going to lower the cost from $1,000 a kilogram to $10 a kilogram in low Earth orbit. $10 a kilogram. It's going to cost less to launch a kilogram into orbit than it is to send a package from New York to London. Think about that. It's amazing. We are heading toward a bright and exciting future where we're going to see cargo missions to the moon and Mars and we are going to see human missions to the moon and Mars and it's coming fast and it's fantastic. And that is why Starship is why Falcon 9 was the precursor to Starship. This is where we're heading and this is what is going to get us to Mars. And we're going to see a human colony on Mars. We're going to see human operations on the moon, not just visiting. We're not just planting a flag. We're going to see a base on Mars. We're going to see a colony on the moon. Humanity is going to become a multi-planetary species. Science fiction is becoming real. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Let's have fun. If you want to know more about how Starship is going to make things less expensive and, and accelerate the Mars colony, check out this video I made recently. It's all about the money. Please support this channel on Patreon below. Buy the t-shirts, links below, t-shirts. 
and thank you for watching.